Something extraordinary is happening right now. A seismic shift in how we talk about women's health. After decades of silence, dismissal and fear, the media and scientific community are finally catching up to what many of us have known all along. Hormones matter. And midlife women have been left behind. Two major articles in Nature magazine and significant features in the New York Times have just made one thing unmistakably clear. Sex hormones are brain hormones. The tide is turning. But with this awakening comes chaos. And I want to talk about what happens next, because this may be the largest uncontrolled experiment that's about to unfold in women's health in history. I'm Dr. Mana naturopathic and functional medicine doctor. Twice in my life, medicine failed me. Now I'm passionate about digging deep to find the truth about health and wellness for myself and for you. So let's look into what the articles said. The New York Times ran a major story recently called Sex Hormones Are Brain Hormones. It points to the mounting evidence that estrogen isn't just about reproduction. It's critical for cognition, for memory, mood, and resilience. One quote that stood out to me said, if we had known hormones were brain hormones, the entire women's health initiative narrative would have been different. That, my friends, is a reckoning. The very next day, the New York Times ran an article on 17 ways on how to cut your risk of dementia, stroke, and depression. So, there is a critical mass of information that is coming together, especially for women's health. And then another very important event has occurred recently, and the irony is so hard to miss. The Women's Health Initiative, once heralded as the largest and most ambitious study on women's health, is being shut down. Just as the conversation around menopause, hormones, and brain health is finally gaining the mainstream traction it deserved decades ago. I do think that the WHI did more harm than good when it prematurely halted the hormone therapy arm and scared a generation of women away from HRT, a life-enhancing treatment, hormone replacement therapy, which I call a life-enhancing treatment. But make no mistake, pulling funding now is not a course correction. It's another blow in a long history of systemic neglect. Women's health continues to be deprioritized, underfunded and misunderstood. And we all pay the price. Meanwhile, in March and April 2025, Nature magazine published two significant studies. The first shows that women are twice as likely to get Alzheimer's as men, something that we've known for a long time. And no, it's not just because we live longer. Gender disparity isn't just about biology. It's about neglect. Neglect in diagnosis, neglect in treatment, neglect in research, in policy, in the medical narratives we tell women about their own bodies. The second explores the socio-cultural impact of ignoring menopause. It directly implicates hormonal decline during midlife in rising rates of cognitive decline, depression, and cardiovascular risk, even job attrition. It is no longer French science. This is mainstream medicine and it confirms what so many women have experienced firsthand. I lost myself in midlife. I couldn't think, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't work, I couldn't lead. We are standing in the eye of a cultural storm. And this is where things get complicated. Because after 20 years of being told that estrogen is dangerous, women are now hearing that it's essential and they are waking up fast. I predict that there is going to be a massive surge in demand for hormone therapy. And right now, the medical community is not ready. Most physicians were never taught how to prescribe hormone therapy correctly. Many still believe outdated data. Others are too scared of liability. The result? Women are asking questions their doctors cannot answer. As I said, this is about to become the largest uncontrolled experiment in women's health. Women are learning the truth in real time. Doctors are scrambling to catch up and misinformation is spreading just as fast as awareness. This is our inflection point. If we get it right, we can change the trajectory of aging for millions of women. And if we get it wrong, we risk mass confusion, unsafe protocols and missed opportunities. So what do we do? First, 
we educate. Women deserve to know that estrogen supports the brain, bones, heart, and immune system. And it is best to start hormone therapy in perimenopause or as soon as possible. But if you are more than 10 years out from menopause and did not start hormones, it is not too late. Let me repeat that. It is not too late if you are more than 10 years out of menopause. Find and work with a menopause literate provider. The goal isn't just to treat hot flashes, it's to optimize long-term health. Second, we prepare. Clinicians need updated training, functional tools, and the courage to reframe menopause, not as a decline, but as a transition with medical implications and therapeutic possibilities. Third, we protect. We need standards, guardrails, clear guidance. This cannot become the wild west of bioidentical hormones and influenza medicine. And finally, we advocate for coverage, for education, for workplace support, for clinical research, for the millions of women who lost out on 20 years of better health because no one told them hormones mattered. This is the beginning of a new era, and it's not a gentle one. It's fast, messy, overdue, and it is here. So if you're a woman in midlife, buckle up. This awakening is for you. If you're a doctor, a policymaker, a researcher, get ready. This is your moment to step up. I'm Dr. Mana, and I'm here to help us meet this moment with discernment and compassion. Because the hormone conversation isn't coming, it's already here.